In five years from now, the person that you will become is based on the books that you read today. I've been studying personal finance over the past decade, reading a ton of business and self-development books to understand what makes a person financially successful. And in today's video, I'm going to summarize all of the lessons that I've learned from all of these books. If you're new here, my name is Alice and I'm a chartered professional accountant by trade. And on this channel, we discuss personal finance, business, digital marketing, and some other life improvement stuff. So do me a favor, thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and turn on that notification bell. But money comes down to three buckets, making it, keeping it and growing it. Making money requires skill, keeping money requires discipline, and growing money requires knowledge. For example, if you want to make more money, you need to be able to provide value to the marketplace through a skill or be able to use your skills to solve problems for other people. Keeping money is, you know, discipline, budgeting, not spending excessively. Growing money with knowledge requires you to have an understanding of assets and investments. So here are the 10 lessons that I've learned. The first is that you have to accept that your life, wherever it currently is right now, is 100% your own doing. And I say this with love, but until that you can accept this, you're never gonna be able to make a significant improvement to your financial situation. Until you realize that you are the only person in your life that can take control, right? Rather than blaming other people or like sitting around and waiting for someone else to make money for you, sitting around and waiting for someone else to pay for you, sitting around and complaining about circumstances, um, about who did what to you. So it's important to take ownership of your life and don't give anyone power over your life, your narrative, your thoughts, right? Because it's your life. Changing your financial situation requires you to change. And in order for you to change, you have to first accept that your life is in your control. And the reason why your life is the way it is right now is because of you and the decisions that you made. Second lesson is that success is a mindset and it's a choice and it's learnable. So when you make a decision for yourself that making money is not an option, being financially successful is not an option, it's mandatory, you will start to attract more opportunities into your life and you'll have the drive to take action on these opportunities, whether you feel like it or not. If a person is closed-minded, then even if an opportunity presents themselves, there are people out there that you can show them a gold mine and they would actively choose to look in the opposite direction. They would rather default to their excuse list than to objectively evaluate whether an opportunity has potential or not. And if you didn't grow up with very successful parents and have a crazy network of friends, this one can be hard because you've subconsciously adopted their narrative of whatever their life is. But if you're watching this today and you're not someone that's born into generational wealth and you want to learn how to break the cycle, then it starts with your decision to think and act like a person that is successful. And a person that is successful acts like success is not an option. It's not a choice, it's mandatory. When you make a decision that it's not an option, then you stop making excuses for yourself. And just watching this video for you until the very end and making a decision that you are going to make more money and do well financially for yourself in this lifetime already puts you ahead of people. Now, it doesn't mean that it's easy, right? It just means that it's learnable. And it all starts with your own attitude towards life, towards other people, towards making money, the thoughts that you have in your head, the things that you say to yourself and about other people. Lesson number three is that money is an exchange of value. If you want to do well financially, then you need the right skills in order to be able to deliver that value. The first skill that makes people very wealthy is marketing and sales, being able to solve other people's pain points, being able to sell. Those are probably the two most valuable skills in life to make money because you can combine your skills and skill stack. So if you have an engineering background, imagine how much more powerful you would be in the marketplace if you also understood marketing and sales. You could start your own app with your own engineering background and the ability to market and sell you know, will allow you to be very wealthy if you're good at it. Interpersonal skills are also very important. Being able to build a network, being able to build an audience or build a team because you can't move mountains with just one person and you cannot get rich being a lone wolf. It's just not going to happen. Another skill is being able to work insanely hard with little expectation of reward for a long period of time. So let's say we have person A, the average person in society, six out of 10 effort expecting a 10 out of 10 reward. Then you have another person, person B, that does a 10 out of 10 effort, working smart and working hard, and expects a six out of 10 reward. Who do you think is gonna make it in life and have a bigger chance of getting rich in the long term? 
Hard work always pays off. Next skill is learning how to be an expert in one area. Where people get very rich and wealthy financially is when they've become an expert at one thing and they focus on one thing and they win at the one thing. You do need to be able to focus and become an expert in one thing for a reasonably long period of time before expanding onto other things. Lesson number four is the ability to take calculated risks. Getting wealthy and making money requires you to take calculated risks. This part is tricky because everyone's risk tolerance is different, but in life, in business, all money is made from taking risk. If you had a thousand dollars in your bank account and you emptied it in the midst of a Bitcoin bull run out of desperation, that is not a calculated risk. Risk isn't bad. It's taking calculated risk and learning how to protect yourself in the worst case scenario. Learning how to evaluate opportunities objectively is super important. Next is leverage. You need some point of leverage to be rich. Trading time for money is not gonna make you rich because you only have 16 hours a day and you don't have leverage. It's like 10, it's just math. 10 plus 10 plus 10 equals 30, but 10 times 10 times 10 equals 1000. That's what leverage is. So if you sleep eight hours a day and you have 16 hours of waking time in a day, find a point of leverage and utilize it. You know, your job will definitely pay bills. And if you are in a high income situation, then you can be very comfortable, but you clicked on this video because you wanna learn how to be rich, not financially comfortable. And rich requires leverage. Next is investing in assets that increase in value or generate an income. I have a couple other videos on my channel about investing, investing in stock bearing dividends and crypto assets. Assets, so make sure you check out those videos if you're interested in learning more about investing. Lesson number seven is good decision making. The only way to get good at decision making is to make more decisions and bounce back quickly from mistakes that you make. Remember that indecision is a decision. If you do make a decision, which ends up being a mistake, that's okay, that happens. It's impossible to move quickly without making mistakes, but the key is that you run a tight feedback loop to make sure that you don't make those mistakes again. This is where the school system has messed with our heads a bit because school needs you to be perfect and trains you to need to be perfect, but no one is perfect. And what the school system maybe should have taught us is the value of working hard, taking action quickly, and then being able to recover from your mistakes quickly rather than penalizing people for making the mistakes in the first place. Because trying to be perfect on the first go is actually why a lot of people end up never taking action in their life in the first place. Indecision leads to poverty. So be fast at making decisions and have a good decision-making framework for yourself. So if you have a business, that means learning how to budget expenses and monitoring your margins very closely managing your cash inflows and outflows and running a lean machine. And if you're employed, then that means keeping the money that you make and either using it to invest back into yourself so that you have more skills so that you can earn more in the marketplace or you put that money into investments. And I do think that for most people that are employed, investing it into yourself first is more important than investing. Lesson number eight is being good at keeping it. So I think the hardest part of money for most people is keeping it. Because I'll tell you what, as an accountant, most people overspend and most businesses overspend. I say this as an accountant, you know, an accountant that's trying to cut costs all the time, but you know, I've seen people spend money on some of the craziest stuff, whether it's personal or for business. So your business got a bunch of funding, but you're pre-revenue and now you're gonna go spend all that money on expensive dinners and like luxury travel. Keeping expenses lean and staying frugal for as long as you can emotionally endure, whether that's individually or in a corporation, while you work on making and earning more every year and increasing that income to expense gap is a really good skill to have. So if you're making 100K a year after tax and your fund fund is 10%, which is 10K, next year, try to push yourself to make 150K or 200K, right? Then your fund fund grows to 15K and 20K, right? That's what's gonna allow you to buy nicer things. I personally know people that Uber eats every single meal and every single coffee that they eat every day. And they can do that while still being financially responsible because they spend their effort on making more. Next lesson is to be very careful of who you hang out with, who you listen to, and who you take advice from. I think one of the biggest slippery slopes that you can fall into in life is hanging out with the wrong people or taking advice from the wrong people and not having a good enough filter of who is worth listening to, who is worth taking advice from, and who is not. 
Let me put it this way. If you spent your time around really successful millionaires, what do you think your odds of becoming one is too? What types of things do you think that they talk about? What types of problems do you think that they solve? This is something that I've learned the hard way myself. Do not take business or financial advice from people who don't have what you want in life, who aren't at least a little bit ahead of you. But when I do find somebody that is ahead of me, that has something that I want, then I actively listen to, actively take notes and internalize everything that people who have what I want say, I listen. In fact, if it's a talking head person, I'll even put them on 0.5 speed and write down what they say, rewrite what they say, sleep on it, breathe on it, and internalize it. I am kind of obsessive about certain things. And I'm actually a very good student when I find the right teacher. But I think the mistake that a lot of people make is that they are listening to the wrong teachers. Last lesson is time management and priority management because how you schedule and plan your days, your tasks, and what you prioritize will dictate the outcome of your life because we all have 16 hours a day. There are billionaires out there that have the same 16 hour days that you do. So if you don't learn how to manage your time and your priorities right, then what happens is that you might end up making the time excuse for yourself, right? Oh, I don't have time to do that, I don't have time. You know, no one ever has time to do anything. You have to find time, create time for things that will feed your business, that will help you earn more money and create time for things that are important to you. I actively do everything that I need to do within my power to make sure that I have the time for things that add value to my life. When people say that they don't have time to do things, like you don't need a crystal ball to predict what that person's life is going to be when they're 65. Some really good time management books, Deep Work, 12 Week Year, The Power of One More by Ed Milet. Time management, priority management, and task management basically determines the outcome of your life. If you like this video today, you're gonna like another video of mine, which I'll leave up top here, on the eight ways that you can make more money in 2024 online, where I go over all the most current ways that people can increase their sources of income using the internet and their phones. So make sure you check out that video up top. If you found any value in this video, make sure you hit the thumbs up, turn on the notification bell, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Until next time.